Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So I have a lot of people asking me this question, where are the border pair videos? You used to have so many of these border pair videos. And I have about 600 edited ones and about 400 live streams. It's over a thousand videos of the same thing over about an eight year time period. So I've started to take a different approach to teaching people border pair. And that is with this project here at repair.wiki. With border pair videos, it, it, each one of these videos is like a half hour, 40 minutes long, and expecting somebody to watch 600 of them it really kind of limits the people who are going to get that knowledge. Whereas if I put it in this type of flashcard format, where you have a bunch of pages that just say, here's the model of the device, here's a bunch of common problems, and here are points that you may want to measure or look at to fix that specific problem, it takes the troubleshooting down time down a lot. So if you have basic electronics knowledge, instead of spending 10 or 20 hours banging your head against the wall to try and figure out a common signature flaw on this device, instead of you having to reinvent the wheel, you can just come to this page and do five or 10 minutes of troubleshooting and potentially have a repair. It also allows you to tell if the device that you're working on is viable to repair or not, or if you should let your customer know up front that there was a low chance of you actually being able to fix this. And it makes the knowledge a lot more accessible to people who may not have commercial repair shops like mine. Now, this is something that I've been able to do as a result of my nonprofit repair preservation group, which was graciously donated to and started by billionaire Aaron Wolf, who is now my boss three years ago. What we're looking to do here is find people who are at the top of their field, who are really good at repairing devices that have a very high repair demand, who are open to accepting money to write these types of guides so that the repair industry as a whole, as well as individuals that are just working in their kitchen or just want to fix stuff, can do better jobs at fixing these devices that have a really high repair demand where there's a really low supply of information out there on how to repair them. And what I'm looking for here is not so much for people to hit the donate button on the website, although I'm not going to say no, but what I'm really looking here are for donations of information. So what I wanted to do in this video is just kind of talk to the two top contributors that I've had so far to repair.wiki just to kind of get out of them how they got into the industry, how they learned how to fix things, and why it is they're open to donating their time and their information to repair.wiki to create guides for it. And I also want to talk a little bit about how it's affected their business. But above all, I want to talk about this idea that has seemingly permeated our culture that if you you teach other people how to do what you do, that you will go out of business. And I want to keep hammering home how, in my opinion, just how wrong that is. That rather than have every one of us fighting for a bigger piece of a limited size pie, that what we should all be doing is fighting to increase the size of the pie. And the way that we increase the size of the pie is we increase the credibility of repair in general, which will increase the number of people who trust it, which will increase the number of people looking for repairs, which is better for all of us. And I think that's what happens when this type of information is put out there. That being said, let's get started. I will leave a link down below to websites for the nonprofits, as well as a Discord link for anybody who wants to join the Open Repair Discord, who may want to arrange contributions to this wiki, or just anybody who says, hey, I think this could be better on this wiki, and here's how we can make that happen. We are open to any sorts of suggestions and contributions that are positive in nature that get us towards our goal. So thank you very much to Tim Herman from TCRSF for coming on. I really appreciate it. No problem. Glad to be here. Can you say how it is you got started in this business and also how is it you got started with board repair? Because some people get started with board repair after they get into MacBook repair. Of course. So uh, basically, um, in the start of 2016, I had no idea that motherboards could even be repaired. And um, one of your videos kept popping up in my recommended. I clicked on it and instantly I, I did not was not interested. I did not want to watch it, um, but they kept popping up in my recommended. So uh, eventually I started watching them habitably. But uh, yeah, I, I watched the one and I'm like, well, what is this? I, I'm not interested in this. I didn't want to watch it. Um, but they continually kept popping up in my recommended. So I started watching and then I watched one of your some of your business videos. I think it was actually the uh, dealing with depression video about having more things on your plate. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to start a computer repair business. And I remember telling myself, I remember in a hardware store looking at tweezers thinking, okay, you need those for component level board repair. And I'm not smart enough. I could not fix motherboards. I'll never be able to. So anyway, I tried for a month advertising for general PC repair and I didn't get any business. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to try practicing on board repair. Um, so I got a little, like a little USB microscope and a Radio Shack soldering iron and some cheap hot air station, W8, W8. So, um, what was it? 858D, the ones with the blower and the handle, you know, cheap piece of John Cot air station. I started practicing. Um, and 
I remember getting my, I remember going around to local repair shops around this area and average saying, Hey, I could fix boards. So one of them gave me an A203115 to fix a 2012 um, 81278 MacBook Pro. I remember getting it and being saying to myself, Oh crap, what do I do now? I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but anyway, I fixed that board. I found out what was wrong with it. It was a quarter fan spinning board. Um, my very first board was a quarter fan spinning board, and I actually figured it out. Um, and it was a bad ISL 6259 and two bad current sensing resistors. So that was my very first board repair. R7051 uh, and R7052? Yep, of course. And a little trace between them every time. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, and I brought it back fixed. And then... Um, they gave me two more. Um, these were 820-2879, so 2010 um, A1278s, and surprisingly, both of them were fixable and did not have a dead MCP-79. So <laughs> fix both of those. Um, and then with the money that I made off those two repairs, I got a real microscope. I got an SE-400, and um, just being able to actually see really, really, really helped out You know, when you could actually see what you're doing. Because, you know, those little digital USB microscopes, you can't really see. You can't really see what you're doing very well. Um, but um, that's pretty much how I started. And after a while, I went to an iFixit conference. And this is after building my website and everything. I built a, a decent website. I went to this iFixit conference where I met a bunch of people. I met Jessa. And then uh, several people from that conference also started sending me um, board repairs. And I remember sometime... Sometime during all of this, I don't remember if it was before or after I started a Facebook group, uh, MacBook Logic Board Repair, and my whole idea behind starting this group was to help answer, help other people solve their problems in order to better my skills. So what I would do is just try and answer and talk people through board repair, and through that, try and better my skill and better my knowledge through doing so. And that actually was really beneficial as far as starting my business, and that also helped me get more clients. Yeah, it's really difficult. I mean, it's easy to try and fix a board in front of you, but it's very difficult to try to fix a board through somebody else's troubleshooting oh, yeah. and description. Absolutely. When you can't really figure out what, you know, like uh, which solder ball that they did, they're not mentioning that popped yep. out next to a chip or something, and you yep. have to try to figure it out over the internet. Yep. But it's infinitely more rewarding when you see somebody leave a post and you say, like a, I don't know, ball A5 on U7701 is missing. And like, yeah. how'd you know that? And it's like, it, it, it's incredibly fun. It, yeah. it becomes a video game. Yep, okay, it so is fun. you have written countless guides for repair.wiggy, and I'm yes. very appreciative to have you here to write these amazing guides so that other people can learn. Now, as I said, there are so many people that think if I show somebody else anything, I'm giving away my secrets. That's what makes me valuable is this information. And once this information is out there, I no longer have value. You wrote these guides over a year ago. Yes. Can you give us any idea of where your business has gone in the past year? Are you out of business? Are people no longer bringing you no. MacBooks to fix? Uh, that, is, that is not the case. Is um, your Flux expiring? No, uh, not at all. So actually, I have my own Flux now. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, that's coming up. But um, no, my business is still going well. I'm actually opening a new location in a better area. I'm actually keeping this one. It's just going to be a very limited hours here. Um, but I'm opening my second location in a really nice part of California. Um, nice, nice, really, really nice location. Nice store, big store that I'm, it's under construction right now, but it'll be open soon. Uh, but no, I have never... I've never seen a decrease in work from giving information. If anything, there's been an increase because people see you know what you're doing and they want to send you stuff. Um, like all the YouTube videos I do, instructional YouTube videos, those have only helped my business. I have not seen any decrease by giving information and I never anticipate to see a decrease in giving information. In my, in my opinion, giving information is power and you're giving other people the power to fix boards. Um, but you're also, I remember in one of your videos you said this, I don't remember how you exactly put it, but you're basically creating a bigger piece of the pie. You're creating a larger industry. You're creating more, you're actually creating more work because more people think this repair is possible. Yeah, you know, one of the things that gets me is every now and then when some right to repair thing front pages read it, there'll always be this one comment with two or three hundred upvotes from somebody saying something along the lines of, you know, I brought this device to an independent repair center and they spent six weeks on it. They couldn't figure it out and it wound up being a really easy issue. Screw these independents. They're all scammers. And what I think is that person is probably going to repulse so many people from using their local independent repair shop because of their one bad experience. Yep. So it, it's it's not really this individualist thing where if I'm really good at my job and everybody else sucks, I'm good. No, because that person may never even bother coming to my repair shop yeah. if they are afraid to because the independent repair industry, which I'm a part of, whether I like it or not, sucks because somebody else is bad at their job. So if this guide results in somebody else doing a repair properly rather than 
heat gunning a CPU, tossing a board into an oven, or mm -hmm. you know, spraying it with Windex. Like if anything on here from the guides and how to do cleaning properly to how to do repairs properly actually helps somebody do it well, the entire industry looks better. And if the yep. entire industry looks better, I'm a part of that industry, which is good for me, rather than everybody, you know, people assuming that I don't know, like everybody yeah. out there is like L2. Hundred um, percent agree. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. I really no appreciate problem. it. I have included a link to Tim's website and YouTube channel down below if anybody are interested. He does videos on how-to guides and how to fix MacBooks. He provides information on a number of different forums and Facebook groups. And he also has a website where he provides mail and repair services and walk-in repair services if you're in California. <laughs> That's it for today. And as always, we have the iPhone section which Jesse Cruz has done a lot of contributing to. And I really just kind of wanted to highlight the... Um, the profiles of the individuals who have done a lot to contribute to this project. So thank you so much for taking the time. Hey, Louis, how's it going? All right, so I have links to your business and your YouTube channel down below. Can you just discuss a little briefly how it is that you got into this business and then how you segued into doing board level repair? Sure, yeah, I mean, um, I think the main thing was about 10 years ago, I, um, I was basically thinking about like how do I make more money and you know, a day job is not gonna do that. Uh, you know, I was kind of wanting to start my own business and essentially I started doing uh, flipping. So I would basically buy stuff at Goodwill or yard sales and then sell it online like eBay and Amazon. In that process, I started getting into flipping phones. And uh, then I figured out that if I buy a broken phone, I could buy it for a lot cheaper and make more money after I repair it. So I started repairing phones and like this whole time I was posting all my everything I was doing like on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. So like, because I was posting repair stuff, people started messaging me like, like friends and family were like, hey, can you fix my iPhone? And then I figured like having people come to me to fix their stuff was a lot more convenient and profitable than driving around town, trying to find good deals on stuff to flip. So essentially I just put all my efforts into just phone repair and, um, yeah, I, I basically just learned through watching the YouTube tutorials, uh, you know, fixing phones and stuff. And then um, eventually I started getting phones coming in that were having board issues. And I was like, you know, like no power or no touch and stuff. And at that time, I didn't know board level issues were even a thing. So I, I started my Googling and YouTubing. That's where I came across uh, information like on your channel that, you know, board levels, Board level issues are repairable, and that's kind of what opened my mind. Oh wow! Like I, I never thought that that was possible. So from there, it kind of just uh, my curiosity into that board level stuff really uh, made me want to just learn to do it myself because I was outsourcing it, but it was uh, very inconvenient because at the time I had a full time job, so having to go somewhere to drop off a phone and then pick it up. It was a huge pain and I figured it's a lot more convenient if I could just do it in-house and more profitable too. So what was the whole. tipping point for you where you realized I don't need to have a full-time job anymore? I'd rather do this. Oh, that, that took a while. Actually it was, um, I'm coming up on two years, I think now that I quit my day, my day job. Um, I was just so flooded with repairs that I was realizing like, okay, I'm spending about eight hours a day doing my day job. But like I started doing the math, like if I spent that eight hours repairing, I would I would make way more money than, you know, the fixed eight hour salary. So I kind of eventually I just I was affecting um, you know my turnaround, my customers, like my key was building up more than I could, you know, fix. So I was like I have to I have to quit the job because um, <laughs> eventually I'm going to be like one month turnaround and people are going to stop using me because of that, the long turnaround. So. so one of the things that I wanted to go over here is there's this unique attitude that seems unique to our particular sector of the repair industry that I don't see ex that exists anywhere else. It's the F you, I got mine attitude. Like in other industries, I've never seen somebody say, if some other plumber learns how to unclog a toilet, then I will be out of business. If somebody else knows how to rebuild the transmission, I'll be gone. If somebody else knows how to fix an axle on a car after a crash, then I, nobody will come to me for this anymore. But for some reason in our industry, nobody wants to give away any sort of information. They will spend hours, days, weeks trying to figure something out, realizing just how miserable it is. And the moment they figure it out, they don't want to make it easier 
for anybody else in the industry uh, because they and when I have conversations with them is because they believe it will negatively affect their business. So your guides that we have here, in my opinion, are the most detailed iPhone guides that we have in the site. This is I'll link it down below. This is literally pages and pages of information. It's not one of these guides that's just like just enough information for you to know that to send it into you. This is a guide that somebody could use to learn how to do this professionally and then fix their own devices at their own company. And you, you produced these guides for us over a year ago. Uh, have you noticed your business go downhill as a result of you publishing any of this information? Not at all. I mean, I think uh, people need to realize is that, uh, you know, making content online is, is the thing right now. Like you got to post content online, whether giving away your secrets, you know, people will then see you as an authority figure rather than they're just going to steal your, um, you know, people are going to steal your ideas or your information and then you're going to go out of business. I, I don't think that's how it works. You know, it, sharing just grows the, the whole market altogether. Like, like I, I didn't know board level repair was possible, like I mentioned, until I came across your channel. And I was like, oh, wow. And then I started digging in more and found other channels and stuff like that. So I think sharing just makes more more repairs even possible yeah because it's probably the way i see it is if other people know how to do what we do then that means some other shop out there is probably going to do a better job when that customer goes to that shop and mm -hmm. actually gets something done well instead of done horribly they're going to promote the entire independent repair industry more whereas yeah. if they go to an independent and they don't know you know knocking c5202 rf off on an iphone 6 uh, because that corrodes all the time or that dies the shorts all the right. time like if, if they're not aware of that and they say sorry can't help you after two weeks that person's going to say i pr tell their friends just go to apple all these independents suck so if, yeah, if all of problem. the <laughs> if all the independents have more knowledge i imagine that it'll look better for the industry which means more customers which means more business for all of us and i, yeah, I thank I, you for I, taking yeah I get, I get a lot of customers who their first instinct is go to apple Apple says not fixable, and you know they just come across my YouTube channel or my website, and they're like, "Oh wow, it's actually fixable!" Like, at, they were at, right at the fence of, "Do I just buy a new device, or maybe I'll tr see if it's even repairable?" And I think a lot of people don't realize how many people don't even try to get their device repaired because they don't know it's possible. Because uh, you know, Apple just likes to say, "Yeah, you know, the board is fried. Time for a new phone." Yeah. Well. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for taking the time for this short interview. Thank you for taking the time to create all these guides. And uh, thank you for being a part-time employee of the Repair Preservation Group nonprofit I put together a few years ago to continue making these and attracting people to make more guides like this. And it's my hope that we can find more and more people that are willing to share this type of information rather than believe if they do, they'll all go out of business. So thank you very much. Absolutely. No problem. Thanks for having right. me. Bye-bye.